there's a lot of those films that you try to watch today and you go, Jesus, I don't know if you could ever do this. Like, there's so many films that you try to watch today. Like, I just watched Super Bad the other day. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I'm like, man, I don't even know, know if you could do Super Bad today. And that's not even that long ago. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't believe in that kind of statement because the thing about it is, I think that statement is a kind of um, self fulfilling prophecy. Mm-hmm. If you say it's going to be a problem, it's going to be a problem. All right. Because it comes with usually the idea, well, I don't know if they would let you do that. Well, who the fuck is they? Well, you say that as yeah. Quentin Tarantino, but uh-huh. if you're Quentin Tarantino in 1991... Well, okay, yeah, well, I'm Quentin Tarantino in 1991 doing Reservoir Dogs coming off of the 80s, right. which was the decade of they won't let you do that. That's true. And I remember, like, okay, for instance, I'll give, I'll give you an example. So I'm working at Video Archives, and now, by the way, that whole horrible time... And by the way, we're going through the 80s part two right now, right except, now. There, except there's more of a... McCarthy-esque blacklist aspect to it than, mm-hmm. than was in the 80s. The, edi- the 80s seemed very, people were doing it to themselves. Where here is, no, no, people are doing it to you. Mm. Um, but I remember, okay, so in the 80s, this is only happening in America. In the other countries, they were making bold, wild cinema. The Hong Kong movies were off the fucking chart. Uh, Pedro o- Omotovar was like making his wild sex comedies. Amazing. Anyway, so Pedro Almodovar had a movie called Matador with Antonio Banderas that came out. Very funny movie. The movie starts, the opening credits, is a guy sitting in a chair in his living room with his pants down around his ankles. And he's jerking off. And what he's jerking off to are the most bloody, violent scenes in in slasher movies. (laughs) He's got like all his favorite moments from slasher movies uh, of women getting murdered, all cut together, and he's jerking off. And that's the opening credits. And it's just like, there was like so nothing like that available in America. They're like, oh my God, this is the wildest shit ever, man. This is amazing. And so I remember I was like sitting at video archives and I was saying, well, I want to do shit like that when I'm making movies. And then one of the guys said, well, they won't let you, Quentin. And my answer was, well, who's they? Who are they to tell me what I can and can't do, can or cannot do? And at the end of the day, the proof is in the pudding. I never let they stop me. I did what I wanted to do. And by doing what I wanted to do, we changed the 90s. Mm. The 90s stopped being politically correct. And all of a sudden, like in one year, Reservoir Dogs, El Mariachi, uh, Man Bites Dog, uh, uh, Romeo is bleeding. I mean, all these like wild, uh, ir- you know, wild, ironic, violent movies started coming out that just didn't exist in 1989. Mm, that's so true. And then, like, then comes Seven, and then I mean, yeah. you know, it's like we built a bridge, and then everyone followed it. Everyone went over the bridge. Was there any resistance? Like when you wrote Reservoir Dogs, and people are going over it, were, were there any people that wanted to water it down or censor it or say it'd be more marketable if maybe you took certain scenes out? Or Well, there was, uh, 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 in script form, a lot of the violent stuff just kind of went over their heads because they just kind of saw it as a play. They, there was violent stuff, but they were just talking about how much, how much talking was in right. it. But um, when we, uh, when I finished it and had been on the film festival circuit with it for a year, when the uh, when Merrimax bought it, Harry tried to talk me into cutting the torture scene out. Oh. The with Mr. Blonde and the guy in the chair and Getting the ear, his ear cut off. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he tried to talk me uh, out of that, and his reasoning was he might ended up being right all right his reasoning was look quentin this is a movie that anybody can watch but with that torture scene you're gonna alienate women they're not going to want to see this so you literally you're putting your own movie in a little box and but without that scene anybody can go and see this movie and everybody will enjoy it and um and that's kind of actually where I became me because Harvey was used to winning these type of arguments. And he had a bunch of yes men going, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, you know, and but because I had actually been on the film festival circuit f- 
for an entire year. One, I saw that he was right because people were always walking out during that scene. Sometimes it would be <laughs> five. Sometimes it would be 35. All wow. right. They were always walking out because also it's a film festival. You don't exactly know what you're seeing. You know, you read it in the catalog. It sounds interesting. You know, it's not like, you know, right. it's not like you're being set up the way you are when a movie opens theatrically. Right. You know, so but I did know that. Yeah, no, that's the that was the moment of truth for most people. That scene. But now, I think it's the best scene in the fucking movie. So, uh, and I had spent a year watching it, so I wasn't buffaloed. And I go, well, you know, it's that movie. It's what the movie is. And uh, um, you may be right, but I don't care. This is the movie, and it has that scene. And Harvey realized he wasn't going to get his way, and he's used to getting his way. I, I, I stood fast, and there was like a beat of like, Okay, we're going to leave the scene in, and I want you to remember that it was Merrimax who left it alone. <laughs> wow. That, that's uh, an interesting way to control the situation, right? Mm, yeah. To take it and <laughs> yeah. bring it all back to him. Mm. How weird is it? For